every spider lost in this great big world, there is a warm place with friendly room service, delicious food, and a warm place to stay the night. This is Spider Bed and Breakfast. Announcing that we now have two bedrooms in the Spider Bed and Breakfast. Woohoo! So this one is just one that I got for spiders like ore weavers and false widows or widows. This is a stea toda espera. And it was actually kind of difficult to identify this one. There are so many different species of cobweb spiders or false widows and they have little tiny differences. And it took me a long time to identify this guy. But what I just threw in there is a box elder bug. And you can see him reaching down there and starting to wrap it up. Box elder bugs are just a bug that there's a lot of near my apartment and they were small enough to feed this little spider and it loved it. You'll see this a little bit later on but this spider is about as big as like my pinky fingernail. It's not a very big spider but it is beautiful. As it, I loved to watch this one feed because all the other spiders there was a bite and a grab and that was about it but with this one and with the spiders that I'm hoping to be able to get in Spider Red and Breakfast episodes pretty soon, you get to watch them wrap it up and bite them and wait for the venom to set in, and I just thought it was a really cool change. Something that identifies a false widow are those giant pedipalps that it has. Other spiders will have smaller pedipalps, but this one has these two very bulbous ones that make it look like a black widow, and that was one of the key characteristics to identifying this guy. One of the easiest ways to identify a true widow, like a brown widow or a black widow, is that they will have an hourglass on their belly. Even the brown widows do. And you can see on this cobweb spider that it doesn't have one, and that makes it a false widow. It does have the very large abdomen, which had my brother and I convinced that it was a widow for a while, but upon further examination, it didn't have the hourglass, and the markings on its back gave it away to be a cobweb spider. Cobweb spiders live all around the world and you can see a lot of videos on YouTube and on other sites about the Steatora Grossa or the Steatora Triangulosa, but this is actually one of the first videos that I have, or at least that I've been able to find that will have a Steatora Espera in it. Um, the only pictures I could find to help me identify this and like the, the descriptions and everything were from Utah photographers. And so I just thought that was really cool that this spider with this pattern is something that's native to my area. And I've seen it a lot, which I'll show you guys later on in the video, but very unique and not very many videos on this particular species. So after giving it something to eat, we let it go the next day. Here you can see it's very cobwebby and crazy looking web, which is what identifies it as a cobweb spider or a false widow because widows and cobweb spiders make that kind of web. Here you can see the patterns on its legs and on its abdomen. This is slowed down a little bit because the camera was a little bit shaky. There will be a better picture later on, but you can see that it's a very beautiful spider and you see that there's like eight reddish orange dots on the back of the spider and that's what identifies it as a hispera instead of a triangulosa or a grossa. But here you can see how big it is. Not very big, but I was not afraid to touch it at all because cobweb spiders are not dangerous to people. Their venom, like they are venomous as are all spiders, but the venom won't do anything to harm a person very much. So yeah, there we go and we just let it go and be free. Bye buddy. Now guys, we want you to get out there and explore. Here, this is just a beautiful place right by my university, a little garden and a pond that there is. And down in these rocks, I found so many amazing things. Spiders everywhere. There's a box elder bug you can see there. And in here, these are steatoda eggs. These are false widow spider eggs. And I haven't classified which spider it is because I haven't seen the mother in a while, but so cool. There were molts everywhere from the steatoda and different spiders. And I actually caught a cellar spider on camera right after it had molted. You guys can see just above it is the molt and below is the spider. And the molt is just a little bit darker colored above. Thanks for watching guys. This was a great episode and I have tons of other episodes in mind. And just know that every week we'll have a new
arachnid video available for you guys to watch. If you haven't checked out our Facebook page, please do so. We post exclusive videos there too. And thank you guys for watching and like and subscribe if you enjoyed.